G'day ladies and gentlemen, my name is Zach and welcome back to Printed, where resin railing is just a typical 9 to 5. Getting straight into this week's video, I have a little bit of a hobby update. I have successfully put a slightly little bit more paint on my Warriors of Chaos. Um, I am currently painting 19 of them, no, for the, for the 14, 16 maybe, who knows. Um, I am very, very slowly chipping away with them. I've done a little bit on the furs and things. And I'm on the home stretch. It's just the metallics and a couple other stuff to do. And then they will be done, which I'm super, super excited for. Because once they're done, I can move on to some other stuff. And I don't know if I want to do the Halberd uh, Warriors of Chaos next, or maybe work on something big for a video. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I will definitely be jumping onto something new soon. Um, I did also print up these really cool Void Shark uh, models from my store. Um, I absolutely love all the details in them. Um, these guys are the multi-part kit, and I just, I freaking love them. They have that, like, really cool, uh, Carcaridol, I think it is, um, vibe to them. And just, I love every single bit of them. So much detail, so much thought going into them. Uh, they do come with really cool bases, but I did have a little bit of trouble trying to fit them on. because uh, there's, like, a couple of things kind of situated around it. And, uh, it's very hard to fit the feet in there. But, um, I did manage to figure it out. And I did print up three of them. Unfortunately, there's no heads, which are actually currently in the printer. But, unfortunately, I have, uh, run out of time to get them done for this video. So, I just have them over here. You know, one with a head, the other two headless. We just won't talk about it. So, yeah, a little bit of hobbying for me. And, sitting right there next to the camera is next week's video. Um, so far, so good. I have the script fully done for, or almost fully done. There's a little, there's about two parts left to go. But it is fully done, it's ready to go. I've got a thumbnail, about everything. All good jink, blah, fantastic. And I'm so excited to, to bring it out. And I hope you guys are too. It's a 3D printing video and uh, it's using a brand new resin. So keep your eyes peeled and let me know what you think. But moving on to our hobby headlines for this week, we have a new Heresy Mini which is pretty cool. It is very cool to see a model for little Horace Aximand. I freaking love this guy. He's got that cool chaosy vibe to him. He got like the spikes and a big shield and oh, he just really fits the motif so freaking well. But done a good job. He does have a very messed up face. And like, I don't, I don't remember him having the scar on the top of his head in the box. Like, I probably just haven't paid that much attention when I was reading in them. Like, it literally looks like his face has just been re-glued back onto his head. If you guys know why his face looks like it's been hanging off and then coming back, let me know in the uh, comments down below. I would love to see the lore behind that. Because I was not aware of it, and he looks pretty gnarly with that messed up eye and everything. But ultimately, I think they've done a really cool job with this model. Not something I'm definitely going to pick up, but uh, I appreciate the craftsmanship that has gone into this. Next up, we have a brand new Age of Sigma release with brand new Liberators. Can you believe it? After nearly eight years, I want to say, Games Workshop are bringing new and improved Liberators, which I quite like. Now, I don't know if it's... I, I don't know specifically what they've changed to really slim the profile down. I think it's mostly the tabard on like his loincloth. I, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, they don't have that anymore, they just have like the groin chainmail. Um, then the shoulder pads, they've also taken off all the gold trim around it. Literally just the trim at the top and then an open shoulder pad, which is kind of neat. So maybe they bring out some, um, uh, cool transfers. Now, I'm really hoping that in this kit they do include some female options, because the Stormcaster Turtles range is very progressive in the fact that it gives you a lot of male and female options, which is really cool to see. And I will admit, the same thing is happening with the Chaos units. I, I'm very happy to see just uh, some different models. And I say this every week, but I genuinely appreciate what they're doing. And it's uh, cool to have a mix of uh, both uh, female and male units. Just makes more sense as well. Like, you're not going to just recruit one or the other. You're going to have like a, a ragtag fleet of everyone, of elite units. Everyone's included because we got to fight the forces of Chaos. They don't care about your uniformality. They just care that you're dying. So it's really neat to see that uh, hopefully they go down that direction. And last but not least, they have bought out, you know, your new Liberators. But they are also getting rid of the majority of the Age of Sigma range, which I'm, I'm going to quickly talk about because 
This amount of releases being scrapped or turned to legends ultimately means that Games Workshop aren't... They don't care about them anymore. They're done. And like, I assume that most of them, especially the Skaven stuff or the Stormcast Eternal stuff, will most likely have new kits for it. So that's probably not a problem. And I mean, for the, the Age of Sigma or the, the Stormcast, I should say, they are losing a lot of characters, which I... I don't mind, like, I'm not a big character-centric kind of guy, so I guess it's it's not much of a big loss to see a few of these guys going. But like, there's Paladins going, the Adjudicators. Um, two things that I'm very surprised about. The, um, oh, where are they? It was the, the Lady People, I think it was. Yeah, the Sequiturs. And um, I'm pretty sure the Aventus Firestrike guy, like, they were pretty recent kits, all things considered. Like, I swear they only either came out last edition or maybe like two or three years ago. Which, if Games Workshop is moving to do that, I'm pretty worried about the viability of a, a lot of the plastic kits. And, I don't know, I guess it also kind of creates a little bit of FOMO, so people are more likely to panic buy these. Because um, they're not going to be made anymore, long story short. Moving on, there is also a barge of Skaven stuff going out, which, I'm going to be honest, I'm, I'm a sucker for nostalgia, but I think it will be really cool to see some updated things. Actually, the one model, the one model that I will be sad about is the Arch Warlock. That guy looks sick. He, I reckon, is the only model that actually holds up to today's standards. The Doomflay is pretty, I mean, it's cool, but it doesn't hold up. Like the Arch Warlock, he, he still looks like he fits into a regular army and like the scope really isn't that bad and I'm gonna be sad to see him go. I might just pick one of him up because I, Used to paint a bunch of Skaven for my Arnie, and I had a bunch of fun with them, especially like the Warp Sermon and all that. So it might be something that I'll look into, but a lot of uh, a lot of old, old models going, so it'll be cool to see that. I am keen to see what they do with the Rat Ogres, though. They are a fan favorite kit of mine, especially the Island of Blood ones, because they're the only updated Rat Ogres that we got, and uh, building those old uh, stocky ones was uh, definitely an experience. Um, just quickly going through, there's a bunch of org releases that are leaving, a um, bunch of Slaves of Darkness, mostly just the Warcry Warbands, which I don't think people are really going to miss. Like, they're, they're kind of niche, uh, they're very cool models, I, I will say. Um, so it's a little bit sad for them to go, but I, I can get why. Um, the one model that I think is really cool is the Corvus, uh, Cabal, and the Iron Golems. I love those guys. I don't know if I'll pick them up. Like, I, I really want to get them because the FOMO was calling me. But I don't want to give in to the thing because, like, I have a pile of shame. I need to get through it. And, like, I'm not ashamed of the stuff that I have at the back. I actually have a bunch of videos planned for it. But I still just want to pick these models up because I don't want to pay scalping eBay prices. Those are absolutely insane. Um, the majority of the Beast of Chaos range, however, is also disappearing. Um, there's things like uh, Dragon Ogres, the Dragon Ogre Shagger, the Doom Ball, such an iconic model, disappearing. Uh, I... Okay, first and foremost, I didn't know that the Jabberslite and the Cockatrice were still available. Um, I just assumed that when Age of Sigma came around, they ported those on RAM bases and then dropped them after first edition. But it's kind of cool to see that they are coming back. And they... These guys do play a big part in Age of Sigma, uh, not Age of Sigma, the Old World. So it will be interesting to see if they just do new sculpts for them or what exactly they're doing. But things like the Dragon Ogres, the uh, the Shagoth and all that kind of stuff, um, I definitely think will be coming to Old World. Maybe with new sculpts, maybe they're doing like a proper Chaos Range refresh, which I am crossing my fingers and just praying to the Dark Gods that we get that in the next thing. Because GW have already revealed the Bretonians, the Tomb Kings, the Oryx and the Dwarves. So we just got elves. Get no, not Skaven. I think it's elves and chaos are left. Which, come on, I'm praying, I'm hoping. Um, lastly, there are a couple of assorted models. Uh, there's a couple of Thoris guys, Scarlet Affringham, the Madcap Shaman, which I didn't know was still a thing. Um, but Valkyrie the Bloody and Scarlet Affringham are two very unique models from fantasy days, and I, I might just pick them up. I'm very sad that they got rid of uh, Throg, the Troll King. He was a sick model, and I am not paying eBay prices for him. He is ludicrously overpriced. So yes, I, I'm hoping that I can pick those guys up, uh, maybe in the coming weeks before they go. And um, yeah, it's cool to see what they're going to do, but very worrying that Games Workshop is tanking the majority of their catalogue. And with the hobby news all done and dusted, it is time for this week's Hobby Hero. 
and that is another day in miniatures. This is a guy who I have recently started watching, I think as of maybe a month or two ago, and I freaking love his videos. Um, he's a relatively small creator. He has a very small community behind him, roughly about 25k uh, subs. And I love everything that he does. The majority of his videos are doing things like uh, conversions, painting tutorials, and sort of exploring his hobby as he goes. And I will admit, the dude makes painting look so easy, and he's not afraid to show the audience what happens when things go wrong. Um, he's recently done a video on 3D printing, so it's pretty cool to see him going into that, because I myself am a massive fan of 3D printing, um, especially proxy miniatures for war games. Like, there are so many amazing sculptors out there, and I really enjoy seeing an alternative perspective on different factions, especially uh, he showed a couple of Puppets War things, and I love them. Their little buggy range is so bulky and very, very, um, like, I would say dinosaur buggy. Similar to that orc range, they, they kind of fit a similar profile, and I absolutely love it. He has also done some really cool conversions recently. Um, his painting is basically a tutorial, like a step-by-step -step when he does it, so I appreciate what he does, and uh, he is inspiring me to hopefully make some slightly better videos, because... I, I really want to challenge myself, but time is of the essence, and I, I keep running out of it. So, yeah, I enjoy his content, and if you guys want to check him out, please go and check him out. He is only small, so if you could drop a sub on him and like his videos, I'm sure it would go a very long way. And I'm excited to see what he does in the future, because he has so much potential, he is just at the, the cusp of his career starting. So, yeah, I can't wait to see what he does with that. Now with that, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say thank you to everyone for watching. I appreciate you all for being here. If you did indeed enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like on it. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe because I would love to see your friendly face painting alongside us and sharing your progress and just enjoying everything Warhammer and hobby related. So everyone, thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'll catch you later. Bye.